Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Now, I don't want to be making a habit of talking about actors and actresses that have just passed away. I know I've just done a video on Ryan O'Neill, um, but I did actually just want to come on here and say a few words also about the actress Shirley Ann Field, uh, who has just passed away a couple of days ago at the age of 87. Now, I actually did get to see Shirley Ann Field back in 1989 on Brighton Seafront, um, and she was there at the time to promote the film... The Rachel Papers, which was starring Dexter Fletcher and Ione Skye and Jonathan Price and James Spader. So she was a little bit down the cast list uh, uh, on this one. Um, and I must admit, at the time, it's in the late 80s and uh, I'm just still a teenager at that time. And so it was very much Ione Skye who was interesting me and perhaps really not so much Shirley Ann Field. So yes, I noticed her on Brighton Seafront and... Really, I suppose I didn't take a huge amount of interest in her, but that's always kind of bothered me over the years because really back in 1989, like I say, I really didn't know too much about her. I knew her. I knew uh, that she had been in films and I recognised her, but uh, I really didn't know her career too much. Um, so, yeah, that's always kind of bothered me. Maybe I missed an opportunity to actually speak to her or get a photo or something like that. But... Um, yeah, now let's just think back a little bit more about Shirley Ann Field. So she started her career in 1955, um, but really was in a whole load of sort of uncredited roles for the first few years. And 1960 is really the time when her career sort of kicks in a little bit more and she has some significant roles. Small parts to start off with, but uh, ones that were in movies that were very significant. So she does have a small role in Michael Powell's Peeping Tom and definitely look out for the restoration of that that's going to be coming out soon. And then she also had a small role in The Entertainer in 1960, which starred Laurence Olivier as a music hall performer um, who is sort of sliding down in his career, but still trying to stay relevant. And the interesting thing with The Entertainer is that another small role in that film was filled by Albert Finney. And Albert Finney, Shirley Ann Field, they went on to star in 1962 in what must be one of the most significant British films uh, of the 60s in what was called the sort of new wave of British cinema following the free cinema movement. And it was Carol Rice's Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, very famous for Albert Finney. Um, Don't let the bastards grind you down. Yeah, all of that kind of phraseology. Um, so, yeah, working class life and dealing with um, problems relating to his relationships. He had a girlfriend in this film that he got pregnant, but then he also got into a affair with um, Shirley Ann Field. Um, so, yeah, this is a huge um, piece of British cinema, hugely, hugely relevant and important. Um, and yeah, if there was only one film to talk about Shirley Ann Field, then maybe this would be it. However, there are some other films to mention. Now, just going back to 1960 for a moment, uh, she had a small role in the film Beat Girl. Um, now, this is a really fun little movie uh, that was really to do with rebellious teen life uh, in London and Soho, the beatniks uh, of that time. Now, this film was significant for being John Barry's first music picture uh, film score, and he wrote a song in this called It's Legal, and Shirley Ann Field sings that in the movie. Um, so, yeah, fun little movie. Uh, Oliver Reed has a small uh, co-starring role in this one. Uh, Edgar Wright kind of champions beat girl nowadays as well so yeah it's a fun little one to seek out if you can find it now, following the success of Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, uh, Hollywood did come calling a little bit for Shirley Ann Field. Um, and in 1962, she did actually get to start alongside Robert Wagner and Steve McQueen in this one, The War Lover. Um, so she was a girlfriend of Robert Wagner's character in this. Um, and then also, of course, Steve McQueen takes an interest in her as well. Um, so, yeah, a fairly small role, not a significant role really for her in this one. Uh, but nonetheless... Uh, uh, getting to star alongside some major Hollywood stars here. And then she was also in the film Kings of the Sun in 1963, directed by J. Lee Thompson and starring Yul Brynner and George Shakiris. 
and in this one she played a Mayan princess so yeah perhaps not the best casting for her um, and again not really uh, a great role I suppose but back in England in 1962 let's go to this one which is directed by Joseph Losey and this is The Damned also known as These Are The Damned and there you can see Shirley Ann Field on the cover here uh, alongside Oliver Reed um, this movie is available through Indicator definitely is worth seeing um, and actually this uh, Indicator Blu-ray also features an interview with Shirley Ann Field as well about her experiences uh, on this movie a really fascinating one this for the 60s uh, quite an unusual film but absolutely worth seeking out and then in 1966 she stars in another great British movie um, and that is Alfie directed by Lewis Gilbert and starring Michael Caine as a, a really disgusting womanizer uh, in this film who tries to have sexual conquests with a great many women one of whom is Shirley Ann Field in this um, a really well written film um, perhaps nowadays people question some of it but uh, it's still a great movie for its time and definitely worth seeing. And then really over the years, Shirley Ann Field has continued to have a career uh, up until around 2015. Um, yeah, again, fairly sort of small roles, I suppose, in a majority of the films that she's been in. Uh, but she has been in some nice films over the years, and those include... Hear My Song uh, in 1991, uh, and this one stars Ned Beatty um, and Adrian Dunbar. I really enjoy this movie, uh, which is uh, set in Ireland and involves Adrian Dunbar as a sort of small club uh, who's facing debt and then tries to hire um, the Irish singer Joseph Locke uh, to appear at his club. Uh, Ned Beatty plays Joseph Locke in this, a really fabulous performance from Ned Beatty in this. Um, so yeah, again, a, a small-ish role for Shirley Anfield, but it's a really, really charming film. And then she was also in the 1985 film directed by Stephen Frears, which is My Beautiful Laundrette, uh, written by Hanif Qureshi and starring Daniel Day-Lewis. But really, I think if we want to remember Shirley Anfield at her best, then it may be worth looking at a movie from 1963. Um, and it's only just over an hour long, uh, and I believe you can get it through the BFI. Um, and the movie is Lunch Hour. Uh, so 1963 it's only 65 minutes long um, now this is a film that's directed by James Hill um, and he went on to have success directing movies such as Born Free, Black Beauty and The Bellstone Fox um, and it's written by John Mortimer uh, and he um, later wrote a TV series such as Rumpole of the Bailey um, but yeah, this is a, just a really interesting film and Shirley Anfield just has a great role in it. It's only a, really a two character uh, drama, although there are a few other characters in the film. But basically, she's a 24 year old in this. She gets a job at a wallpaper uh, manufacturers designing the prints for the wallpaper and uh, she gets involved in having an affair with a 37 year old married man. Now, they meet uh, wherever they can during their lunch hours, um, whether it be at cafes or parks or the cinema, um, but they're always finding they're getting interrupted wherever they go. And so ultimately, uh, the man decides to book a hotel uh, so that they can spend time uh, during their lunch hour that way. Uh, but in order to book the hotel room, he has to kind of create a lie with the manageress there. Um, and this is where the movie then flips because it then becomes less of a romance and an affair and more about Shirley Anfield's character questioning this lie that he has created and what that really says about him as a man uh, and how he is treating his current wife um, and what that may mean for her going forward. So yeah, a really interesting flip there. Now, it, it is a dated film for sure, but it's a beautifully restored film and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, just ultimately this gets uh, Shirley Anfield to really show her acting uh, to the fore you know it's a prominent role for her and she's really charming and wonderful in it um, so yeah I'll just leave you with a couple of pictures of her from that movie um, I recommend you seek it out um, and there you go just a few words to remember Shirley Ann Field who has just passed away thank you very much for watching I hope I'll see you again all the best bye bye